Hello and welcome. This is Business Edge right here on New Central. I'm Tolu Lokwe, Adela Rubalogun. Our headline story, the common markets for Eastern and Southern Africa or COMESA and African Exports Import Bank, also called Afriexim Bank, have signed an agreement to implement the COMESA Regional Customs Transit Guarantee Scheme, commonly known as the RCTG Carnet. What are the details and how will this impact trade in the region and across the continent? This is our focus today. Welcome, this is Business Edge. The agreement signed between Comesa and Afri Exim Bank marks the beginning of the implementation of the bank's $1 billion AFTA adjustment facility. Now, the facility is to support countries who will experience significant tariff revenue losses as a result of the implementation of the AFTA agreement. $200 million is earmarked for the Comesa region. The agreement sets the stage for the implementation of the Continental Transit Guarantee Scheme using the Comesa RC. TG, under which the Afriexim Bank will be the regional and continent-wide guarantor. It will provide transit bonds covering the full range of borders that goods are required to cost. Now, this will be done in collaboration with the African Union, COMESA, and other regional economic communities. Through the scheme, the Afriexim Bank will ensure that when goods do not complete their transit, sums are paid in line with the duties and taxes that would have been required thereby enhancing tax collection for African nations. In addition, the transit guarantees provided by the bank will enable businesses to release working capital, otherwise tied up as collateral, against transit bonds, while also accelerating the movement of goods across borders. By speeding up transit times and reducing costs, the scheme will provide a boost to African manufacturers, ensuring they can easily access the inputs they need for their businesses and enable them to pass these savings on to consumers. Now joining me on Business Edge is the publisher and the executive editor of Business AM, Philip Isakwa. Philip, good morning and welcome to Business Edge. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. So before we get into the details of this particular agreement, let's look at the how and the why uh, such an agreement even exists. Why is the adjustment facility that's being facilitated by the Africa Exports Import Bank even necessary? Why aren't African countries more prepared for this negative conf uh, consequence of the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement after all the years of preparation? Nobody wants to lose revenue. Uh, one of the key issues uh, regarding the AFTA agreement, has, uh, especially with regards to uh, uh, the reason why some people were hesitant was because uh, people uh, I mean countries were careful to see that uh, uh, there was there was no loss of uh, customs revenue you know as a result of its implementation now the Afriexim bank has come up to say uh, being a major driver of uh, the after agreement uh, it has come up to say we are providing some guarantees you know for uh, for 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 the but potential losses that might come as a result of uh, what you call free trade. Free mm. trade means goods moving from one country to the other, especially from um, uh, uh, across the member countries of the of the of the agreement uh, who have signed the agreement. And uh, if that happens, it means that uh, there, 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 there's going to be potential revenue losses. You know, uh, those, what you used to uh, 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 have as uh, taxes uh, for for some products will be will obviously be be lost and so uh Afri Exim bank has come to provide that guarantee it's, it's providing one billion dollars you know and then for that uh, particular commercial region uh 200 million dollars you know for, you know to it's just it just uh, there are guarantees all over the place, you know, whether in Europe, whether in, in, in America, you know, whether in Asia, you know, for to, to, to save guides. Some countries are big countries and some countries are small countries and, and small countries will always be afraid, you know, of what will happen if yeah. uh, uh, they join uh, this kind of agreement that uh, will, will, will put them in some somewhat disadvantaged position. Okay. So you need to guarantee them some, so provide some guarantees and that's what this is all about. So this $1 billion adjustment facility, as we said earlier, is to protect countries against large tariff revenue losses, and you've explained that as well. But in terms of how this facility would be assessed, 
Um, how does this work for a country, for a regional economic uh, community, as we're seeing with the involvement of COMESA? Uh, 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 the Africa Exim Bank will, will, uh, will, uh, has set up uh, some structures, you know, for, for that to be implemented. It's, it's like every other guarantee scheme, you know, that... Uh, uh, those those countries where goods will be, will be passing through, you know, will will be able to calculate uh, put, the, what I call potential losses, or mm. eventually uh, they will become losses, you know, and then uh, the, 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 they will be able to apply, you know, to to Africa Exim Bank, you know, to to the to the system that has been set up, you know, for for this to be uh, to it, it's normal thing. You you have. Um, what these guarantee schemes going on even in individual countries in nigeria for instance you have you have those guarantees you know for 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 some uh, kind of for, for exports for instance you know and then you have to apply what we we're looking out for is uh, is that uh, the the mechanism for implementation of this uh, of the of the payment you know of calculating losses and then uh, there will be transparency you know transparency on both sides both in in terms of the countries that uh, will be affected and then the Africa bank uh, mechanism for implementing it you know to once you have those uh, transparencies in place you know then then uh, then everybody will be happy you know uh, but i believe uh, but as, uh, the, the main thing is that uh, there, there will be uh, a system, a mechanism mm -hmm. for applying for those guarantee. I mean, those payments to be made. You know, okay. and, and a mechanism for calculating the losses and then for for implementation eventually. All right. So this is where the losses are sort of made. So currently, African states require businesses that are transiting goods through their countries to secure transit bonds. Uh, these bonds basically protect against the risk of transit goods being disposed of in the transit countries. So basically, if a good is passing through Nigeria, this bond ensures that if somehow it disappears in Nigeria, the person at the end or the person who has sent it still makes their money. However, the limited implementation of regional transit guarantee schemes means that traders are required to obtain national bonds for every border they cross. As a result, transit costs in African countries are 63% higher compared to the average in developed countries, and they're 135% higher than in Europe, which also means that at the end of the day, the consumer pays higher for these goods. But Philip, why has it taken AFTA to come on board and then this adjustments facility to come on board for this issue that has been a massive issue for trade and goods on the continent? Why has it taken this for these issues to be addressed? It's 50, you're looking at, uh, I think, 52, 53 countries in, uh, on the continent. And uh, you are particularly talking about uh, uh, disparities across across the, the the african continent you know in terms of a, a, a common belief in 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 approach to to, to issues mm. you know because of that you know th there are hesitancies across the continent you know whether it's in west africa or north africa east africa you know there seems to be a different i mean they all seem to have different approaches to to tackling tackling developments that are, arise as as they, they they go along you a typical example would be uh, the, the the issue of uh, of of, of uh, what's it called air, tra air, air transportation you know some some goods still have to travel go to europe before they get to some, some parts of africa mm. you know and and that's because of uh, a lot of disagreement in terms of approach to to to, to different economic issues you know what ought to benefit uh, africa generally you know uh, whether uh, country by country or uh, uh, businesses that are domiciled in different countries you know th these these are issues that uh, have existed from time you know so so th there hasn't been a lot of tidying up you know uh, mm -hmm. as we as we as we approach uh, 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 after because there, there are so many com complexities you know so many complex issues that they had to deal with and once you have those complexities and you do not sort and they haven't been sorted out uh, for Previously. quite a long time yeah. then you you are definitely going to head into an agreement you know not not having everything sorted and mm. like i think I, like i said sometimes when i appeared on your program this program you know that uh, there are so many areas of uh, conflict that uh, uh, need sorting out especially as we begin to implement this i said once 
the, 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 uh, the after took off in, uh, on January 1 uh, this year, it meant that uh, those issues will now begin to, to come on board and come on the table for, for proper discussion and then uh, for, for uh, uh, clearing out those issues uh, as we go along. You know, they, 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 are, they are those uh, treated issues. There are some of them that are very serious, you know, mm. but so long as the, 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 the after is already on, 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 on course, then they will be forced, everybody will be forced to, to, to clear to out what up. needs to be cleared out. Okay. You know, so that's what the way I see it. Okay. So before we go for a quick break, just a quick um, a bit of clarification and explainer. The African Export Import Bank is serving as a regional and continent-wide uh, guarantor. So for specifics, who and what will the bank be guaranteeing? So just give us an example of the type of product or the type of good that we're expecting to see that the bank will guarantee the kind of individual as well, manufacturers we know. But what kind of goods and products are we expecting to see guaranteed? Or is it everything that is produced on the continent uh, by an African manufacturer that can be guaranteed by the bank? Every every good, I, I I strongly believe that every good that is moving from one one part of uh, the, the, I mean one country to the other, you know, will will be guaranteed under this scheme. Re, 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 recall that uh, we, we're talking about some uh, level of insurance here, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and then you you are going to see that this is going to open up another vista of uh, opportunities for uh, so people who I mean some businesses or uh, commercial. Sorry, financial uh, 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 product, uh, 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 you know, uh, people who, who develop uh, commercial or uh, business, uh, financial products, you okay. know, to come on. Bonds are going to be, oh, you have national bonds, of course, you have the bonds provided by Afri, Afri Exim Bank. So we, we, take, we take cement, for instance, you know, mm. so cement is a, uh, we, we have Dangote that is uh, that is in, in 16 countries producing in on, on the African country producing cement. Recall that uh, when Nigerian borders were closed, uh, 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 we, 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 we heard stories about uh, some some uh, uh, what's it called some um, uh, opportunities being created for 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 Bua and and Dangote to. To, to export some product to, to take some product to uh, perhaps Niger Republic and maybe some one or two other countries you know so so those those if you take cement that is going to be moved from from Nigeria to to different parts of the country mm. uh, of the continent then guarantees are going to be provided you know because uh, because you, you're talking about volumes now you know and then uh, uh, the, the custom uh, tariff that used to be paid, you know, will no longer be paid because uh, 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 this Africa has come into into being. You okay. know, so those those losses will need to be. To, I mean, those uh, tariff losses will need to be uh, uh, provided for in in, ter in terms of this guarantee. All right, so Philip, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue the conversation and get into some other issues as well. There are a number of regional economic communities across the continent. How are they going to take part in this agreement as well? Will this be uniformly um, implemented across even the Comesa regional economic community? A few more questions. This is, of course, Business Edge right here on New Central. Do stay with us. You are watching Business Edge right here on New Central. Still with me is the executive editor of Business AM, Philip Isakwa. So, Philip, let's get into more in terms of um, the the regional economic bodies, of course, and also some of the um, the benefits that we're being told that this agreement is going to bring about. So another major part of the deal, according to the AfriExim Bank, is that these savings will be passed down to the consumer. So do you really think that consumers will be indirect beneficiaries of this agreement between Comesa, other regional economic communities, and the Afri Exim Bank in terms of this adjustment facility? That should be basic economics, you know. Uh, when when cost is lowered, because uh, a t tariff used to be uh, added to costs, you know, of, 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 of products, you know, and, and when those costs are added, they are, they are passed down to, to consumers. Now, if there, there are mechanisms to, to remove, uh, of course, the free, the, sorry, the free, the, the free trade agreement uh, removes tariffs, you know, and then if they, ha they are providing guarantees through uh, this, uh, uh, this Afri-Exim Bank uh, $1 billion uh, provision, that means uh, 
the, the producers or manufacturers are going to be to be uh, to be I mean uh, to be allowed some some breathing space, you know, in terms of cost. Mm. So cost is supposed to uh, I mean come down as a result of this, you know, and then you will expect manufacturers to 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 pass this on, you know, uh, by by way of uh, 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 keeping keeping the prices of uh, uh, of goods uh, uh, down. Yeah, but. There, are, there might be other factors, you know, uh, which, which again brings up the full picture of uh, when this kind of agreements are, are implemented. You, you're talking about uh, a continent whose infrastructure situation is still uh, very poor, mm -hmm. you know. So, so we hope, we hope that uh, costs will not come from, uh, uh, you know, some other areas, you know, as a result of. Uh, uh, there's so many other things, infrastructural deficiencies, you know, or or cost is is, is comes. At, 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 you know, you see some some blind spot costs that will come, you know, from other areas. Okay. But the basic economics is that uh, this this cost should be naturally hand, uh, passed on to to. I mean, this cost reduction, you know, uh, uh, or cost removal should naturally be passed on to 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 uh, consumers uh, by way of a uh, uh, reduced uh, uh, prices of uh, uh, goods and, and and services. I like how your answer has should we believe and hope because as you said around uh, infrastructural issues are there and also people just like making a bit more money for themselves but hopefully uh, depending on the type of goods and competition that is at play it will work out in the best interest of the consumer. So Philip let's talk about the tariffs that are going to be reduced. Well we know the Comesa region is one of uh, is one of the continent uh, regional economic uh, communities. So is this reduced tariff going to take place uniformly? Is it going to be implemented uniformly across the Comesa members at the same time? Or are we going to see staggered implementation? What, what are the details in regards to that? Uh, I, I, I wouldn't think that, uh, I, of course, when, when you talk about staggered implementation, you know, uh, because because the, the countries, even within a particular region, you know, tend to be uh, pro self-protective, you know, uh, you know, you will find that uh, th there might be uh, it, some need, you know. I, I will have, a, I will, I will expect that uh, once you sign an agreement, you know that it should begin to to to, to be implemented across the the different. I mean, all the countries that are members of Comis Comesa who sign, who have uh, just signed the agreement. But you will have to understand that uh, there are individual. I mean, uh, the situations that will need to be to be sorted out. Okay. There will still be once you you sign an agreement. There are still other issues that you need to deal with, country by country, mm. country by country. Of course, generally, uh, once you sign it, it's expected to 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 roll in, you know. But uh, there will still be some bottlenecks that will need to be smoothing out uh, uh, with uh, in some individual countries. Uh, okay. Again, you will expect that a large number of them would, would, would jump in, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and, and then begin to, to have this uh, implemented, you know, but uh, you will still have uh, uh, one or two or, or so that will have some uh, uh, issues that will need to be smoothing out. So okay. that, that will form, the if you talk about uh, uh, this not uh, going out effectively across all the countries, those will be the issues that uh, they will need to deal with. Okay, so the bank's adjustment facility is worth one billion dollars, and now we know that two hundred million of that is going to the Comesa region. But there are eight regional economic communities that are recognized by the African Union. They include the Arab uh, Maghreb Union, the community of Sahel Saharan states, the East African community, the economic community of West African countries, also the Southern African Development Community, and others. What do we know in terms of what has been earmarked for the other regional economic communities? 200 million is already earmarked, so that leaves roughly about 800 million uh, for these other facilities. Uh, for these other communities to take advantage of. So what do we know in terms of what is going to the other regional economic communities? Uh, no, no specific allocation yet uh, 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 that has come to, to, to light, but uh, what you will expect to see is that uh, uh, the, the regional, uh, uh, what's it called, economic uh, uh, Communities. communities will mm -hmm. be uh, treated by way of uh, this, the, 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 the vastness or the largeness of, uh, of, of, of uh, economic activities going into it. So you see, Comisa is, is, is a huge one. You mm -hmm. know, $200 billion gone, gone already to, to them out of, uh, out of uh, uh, eight, eight uh, regional economic uh, uh, bodies or unions, you know. But you will expect that uh, some will be 
will, will not be as as large as Comesa. Maybe uh, again, yeah. you come to West Africa. You know that that's a huge a huge number of uh, uh, nineteen member states of of, of uh, belonging to Comesa. You mm -hmm. know, taking two hundred billion dollars in terms of uh, the guarantees that uh, that that are being provided. But uh, we we wait for for African Bank to unroll uh, the full implementation of this. They will go from uh, they will go from region to region. They will mm -hmm. get to West Africa, the uh, uh, West African Economic uh, uh, Union. They will they will go to to the Maghreb, like you said, and then and then you find that uh, some are not as as large as the others. You know, so okay. We, we, so so that that's uh, the way I think uh, this will be implemented. All right, so before I ask that question, you had mentioned um, how in terms of addressing some of the situations with some of these countries, it will be addressed in a way on a country-by-country -country basis. But also, with several of these regional economic communities, we see an overlap in membership. For example, in East Africa, Kenya and Uganda are both members of the EAC and COMESA, whereas Tanzania, also a member of the EAC, left COMESA and joined SADC in 2001. Will this have any effect on how the adjustment facility is dispersed? Does it does it mean anything in regards to this conversation? I, I, I doubt I doubt that will will have uh, 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 any significant effect. Recall that uh, this this has been provided as guarantee, you know, yeah. for the movement of of goods, you know, from country to country, you know. So when 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 that when it comes to a country where perhaps they belong to, to two, two groups, right? You will have to uh, follow the how these goods has transited. Mm -hmm. You know, has it transited from, uh, from uh, what's it called, a commercial region to on, uh, a, 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 a SADC uh, a region? You know, so those will be the, 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 the nitty gritty in okay. terms of uh, uh, actually determining how the how, uh, goods movement uh, uh, will be treated. All but right. The key thing is that it's about movement of goods from one country to the other. You know, so so you are providing those guarantees. You know, as they move, it's it's not so much about the region. It's just that the the, the signing of agreement will be with regions. You know, but the key thing that they have been that has been implemented is the movement of goods from one place and providing guarantees for losses of of re, uh, of uh, uh, tariffs or okay. revenues. You know that uh, we will be we will affect uh, the different countries. All right. Thank you so much, Philip Isakpa, for joining me on Business Edge. We look forward to having you back, publisher and executive editor of Business AM. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. All right. And that conversation has focused on the Comessa Afri Exim Import Bank agreement with an adjustment facility of $1 billion for regional economic communities across the continent as they look to sort of bridge the gap in terms of the revenue tariffs that will be lost as AFTA kicks off. And it has kicked off a few weeks into it. You might be wondering what the positive are and what are the gains? Well, keep watching Business Edge and we'll have those answers for you. Now to wrap things up, we have NC4 to watch and let's quickly get to it. In a bid to facilitate export development in Africa and promote inter-African trade and investment, the African Exports Import Bank has announced the signing of a seven-year, $350 million term loan facility to provide financing to OCP Group of Morocco. Now, the bank made the announcement in a statement issued in Cairo, Egypt, adding that the financing was to support the group's expansion plans across Africa. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi has decided to raise the minimum wage of government employees. Now, the Egyptian presidential spokesperson Bassam Radi in a statement said el-Sisi gave the directive during a meeting with the prime minister and finance minister. The jobless rate in Nigeria has risen to 33.3% in the three months through December, according to the latest reports published by the National Bureau of Statistics. That means that about 23.1 million Nigerians are unemployed. That's up from 27.1% in the second quarter of 2020, the last period for which the agency released labor force statistics. And finally, electricity consumers will pay about 1.20 Kenyan shillings more per unit or an extra 1 billion Kenyan shillings to Kenya Power this month on increased compensation to expensive diesel plants, piling pressure on households. The energy regulator has raised a foreign exchange and fill adjustment surcharges it levies on March electricity bills, hitting household budgets at a time when petrol prices have hit a nine-year high. 
And that's it on this edition of Business Edge. As always, thank you so much for joining us. I'll be back with more business and financial conversations as they affect us as Africans from across the continent. I'm Tolu Lokwe, Adelaru Balogun. Do have a pleasant day. Thank you.